pregame interview time with assistant coach Harry Mahesh, as always. Of course, a, a big night tonight with Talama Night here at the Hat. There was a buzz in the building, but uh, just uh, it was a tough one out there tonight. Some some good, but s some bad out there in a 5-1 loss to the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, the energy to start the game was good. I mean, I thought our first period was was right there. It was pretty even, uh, you know, eight, six shots. It was pretty back and forth, pretty entertaining. Uh, I thought we matched, um, you know, kind of – their energy pretty good they played last night so you know they they traveled all day so we should have probably been the fresher team but you know they came in here uh after a win last night and i thought they did a pretty good job but you know we went back and forth with them at first and we were pretty happy with that i mean you know there's not much more you can ask for other than maybe getting a couple of goals our way but you know that was a little that was tougher um uh, tonight than we expected yeah yeah as you mentioned a great first period highly entertaining hockey and then the second period uh right from the get-go that the Chiefs kind of just took over and you know four goals in that second period and all of them you know similar as just a wide open man in front of the net yeah and it's yeah it was actually really weird um and disappointing uh that they were all similar because that's kind of a big hole uh that needs to be addressed but it just goes to show you know we told these guys after the game that that margin of error is going to be really small. So even if you start off any period a little slow and you can get behind the eight ball pretty quick and that's what happened, bang, bang. You know, we saw that's happened to us a few times and, and it's not for lack of preparation. Sometimes those happen because, you know, guys are maybe a little too on edge and, and you know, it's pretty common that, you know, you go to the puck and, and you leave your guy wide open and it's, it's something you work on as a hockey team at every level. But, you know, you can see when the energy kind of gets amped up, it's easy to, to get gravitated to the puck and that seemed to happen on those four goals and uh, I mean all four goals came in the span of you know the first two minutes and the last two minutes of that second period which is kind of the important times of uh, the game and yeah again it's just a another reminder that uh, you got to be ready to start and to finish every period yeah and Alan, did you look at those four goals as like of course you left a guy wide open but those are are are, are, are a very are very, are very fixable mistakes yeah exactly i mean there's goals where you get outmatched and outclassed with skill sometimes out hard work but these were just breakdowns that um i don't want to say they're inexcusable but it's it's just funny i mean at every level of hockey you coach one of the most difficult things to do is to get guys to communicate on the ice and in the d zone like a lot of those uh, plays can just be talked out you know and it's funny for anybody you know who's been around kids and you don't want kids to you know you're trying to settle them down just put them in hockey gear and put them on the ice because that seems to be the easiest place for kids to not want to talk to each other and um yeah it was pretty evident in all four goals that the communication breakdown was was uh, pretty obvious and then going into the third period, uh, you, you switch goalies, obviously, j j just just to give a, j a jolt to this team because, of course, you can't fault Mets. And as we mentioned, yeah. wide open players in front of the net. Van der Koy played solid, but the team, again, kind of kind of woken up in that third period and, and really and you know outplayed the Chiefs there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Mets, in, you know, he did all, all he could. He didn't get a lot of help. And, uh, you know, the only thing left for him to do was go out there and score five goals, and we didn't think that was going to happen. So, yeah, it wasn't on him. Uh, you know, give him a break. Uh, it's a quick turnaround, and you know we're gonna reevaluate here. But yeah, we we were better, but it's a lot different mindset when you're chasing a game. You're playing a little loose, a little bit more free. There's only really one game plan, which is to go out there and score. So you know you're you're taking some chances, and and we did. We had some opportunity, but you know it just didn't feel like we had any clean looks all night, which is also frustrating on the other side. Is um, you know it's one thing to go and have some breakdowns where you give up a couple, and you know you might have a hot stick and you know, we were down 2 nothing. If we make that 2-2, two -two, it looks a little different. But the fact that we couldn't find the back of the net just kind of made it that much more desperate going into the third. And, yeah, we got one there late in the power play. But, you know, even going to the third, I don't think it felt like we had too many high-danger chances. Yeah, absolutely. And this Chiefs team, I think, did very well in their own zone. They really did, did a good job of clogging up the middle of the ice. They, they blocked a lot of shots. They were getting to the reason. There's really no room to pass or even move in the slot and, and, and at the top of the crease tonight. Yeah, no, they made it really difficult to play in front of them. And, you know, we try to get some shots through through the point that we're hitting sticks and kind of going wide. But that's, you know, that's an element of the game that it, it gets tougher as you go through this the season is is fighting for that ice in, uh, in the middle there. And, uh, yeah, we got to do a better job of that. We have skill. We got some guys who, you know, can do a lot of flash and dash on the outside and play the perimeter. But, you know, eventually you got to get to the middle of the ice. And, and I think we do have the guys to score those type of goals, but, you know, it's able to blend it together. And uh, like I said, once you're chasing the game here, it kind of, it's a different mindset, but there's no reason that, uh, you know, there's no excuse for kind of starting out that second. And, you know, that's 
two nights or you know two games here in two weekends where we've kind of let teams get a couple early on us at the start of the period. So we'll have to address it. I don't know necessarily what the problem is, but it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And then, well, one, one of the bright sparks today uh, was the penalty kill for the Kings. Uh, really, really limited this, this very potent uh, Chilliwack power play tonight. Yeah, you know, we our penalty kill has been something that's kind of been our strength. And uh, there's certain uh, units we have where it seems to kind of match uh, the style of kill we want. And again, we had all week to prepare for these guys. Uh, we watched your game last night, so we felt pretty confident in that department. But again, you know, I thought the, the game was called uh, at a pretty high standard. It, it looked like a, a game you would see, you know, refed at like, a, you know, at the college level. And uh, so the penalties, you know, we took, we need to fix because they weren't really arguable penalties at times but yeah the penalty kill did their job but again it's um you can't score when you're killing and we needed some goals tonight and we saw at the end of the game tonight a couple some rough stuff there caleb bentham marcus dashevsky there maybe 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 uh showing some frustration from the way the knights got is, is that something that, that that you're happy to see f f uh, uh f from some of these players here i uh, at that point of the game i wouldn't call that frustration that's um that's knowing you play these guys in you know less than 15 hours so um Again, that's just the you know the guys recognizing that hey we'll see these guys tomorrow, so leave a little bit of a lasting impression. I mean, as a coach, you know you don't you don't plan for that kind of stuff. But if the guys recognize that on their own and they want to you know maybe let these guys know that tomorrow is not going to be so easy, you know that's um, yeah that's just something that's a part of hockey. And I wouldn't call yeah we've been we were frustrated at times, but that last little bit. I think it was more the guys just being aware that uh, it's a quick turnaround and we yeah. see them again. And then going into tomorrow, we saw, you know, like essentially three different Kings teams in this game, a different team each period. What, what, obviously, you don't want to see the team in the second period. It's safe to say that you kind of want to bring that cell of play that you had in the first period tomorrow? Yeah, that's that's the plan. Uh, you know, again, we can we want to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all these teams that are, that are ahead of us right now, but eventually we want to start to pull away in games too. You know, we've... We've taken control of some uh, very good teams in this building uh, just before the break, and we had that same mindset, you know, when Surrey was here, when Victoria was here, and, and these guys are no different. So, um, yeah, we just have to have a little bit more of that instinct of uh, believing that we're just as good as any team in this division because it's going to be a battle now here down the stretch. Yeah, there's going to be another big battle tomorrow, 1.30. Quick turnaround as the Kings and the Chiefs have a rematch here. Thank you very much here for your time. Harry, post game as always. Yeah, thanks for having me.